What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Alone Together Pittsburgh, streaming at you live. This is uh, our hump day, uh, middle of the weekday, even though it's Thursday, uh, of week 50 of, of the show here, episode 152. Um, here we are, Thursday night, um, uh, still doing it. Um, uh, here we are. Uh, if it's your first time watching, thank you for joining us and welcoming us into your homes and mobile devices. We started the show um, 50 weeks ago. Hey, Pete, what's going on, buddy? Good job. You got it. To, you nailed it tonight. Oh, I did. Tonight was the night. I got the dates. I got the show right. I should have just said the wrong date. I should be like, it's January 26th, 2020. 
here we are again alone together <laughs> all right so um anyway thanks for joining us uh we are here um did the show to keep a sense of community going and uh it's not stopping we've got a fantastic show lined up for you tonight so stick around for the whole thing because it is action packed we are continuing our new segment that we launched last week uh with the uh room temperature pizza uh but this week it, we are going we are doing a deep dive into some pittsburgh shit, and this is a deep dive into the fried fish sandwich all right so uh we're not screwing around we've got some professionals here to talk about it dan giggler features writer from the uh, post gazette is gonna be is gonna be here in a little bit jess whittington is gonna be here she is a professional when it comes to a uh, suit to fish fries she's an expert her tutelage will is is unmatched and unchecked then later in the show, we've got Kate Romaine. Chef Kate is probably going to pop in on the fish talk too. And then we get to find out what Kate ate. And then because tomorrow night we have a takeover, Dave Bracey is going to be doing local brews with Dave Bracey. So I mentioned before that we're going to be doing a takeover tomorrow night. Okay. So here's something for you. It's, it's Pittsburgh Cares, right? Pandemic making you stir crazy? Need something to do that makes you feel good about yourself? There are a number of fantastic Pittsburgh organizations that need your help. Get some good vibes back into your life. Join us for Help or High Water tomorrow night. You see, you tune in Friday night. All right, Pittsburgh Cares will be joining us to co-host in a night full of guests from the nonprofit sector. You can learn more about some amazing organizations doing stuff throughout the city and how they needed it how they respond to it how are you going to do with all this craziness there's going to be a lot crammed in there this past year has brought us together and here we are friday night it's on pittsburgh cares help or high water so eight o'clock regular time so be sure to check that out tomorrow so that said um i'm excited about the show tonight but real quick a little bit of housekeeping couple pieces number one you'll see ticking below the screen here that is our venmo right it is at together pgh um that's how you can support the artists involved with the show tonight and every night the money goes directly to the artists involved in the show even if it's just a buck we would love it paypal and venmo at together pgh if we get kicked off of facebook for any reason if you're watching on facebook we're also on youtube together pgh and uh we also are on twitch together pgh so you've got you've got options if things get crazy with this fish talk okay we also have a podcast it's an audio only podcast you can listen to it tomorrow so you can get it wherever you get your podcasts so that's all checked off uh one other thing we wouldn't be doing this show if there wasn't a pandemic going on um that's right amanda would have believed it if i would have said it was january 26. that's the truth um I, I really seriously the the time is like literally a flat circle i i have no i have no i've lost all concept of times like it was thursday i could have sworn it was monday all day and then like in the afternoon i was like oh it's friday but it wasn't so i'm sure you guys can relate but anyway real quick um because the covid's here every night i talk about the uh the covid numbers in allegheny county uh today was 224 so we're trending in the right direction still a little high one thing we can do keep masking up put the masks on get it ready to go where to is, is if, you, if you can keep washing your hands keep social distancing you're hearing it from enough people you don't need to hear it from me more I did read an article uh today that the um that Heinz Field is going to be doing a big mass vaccination kind of drive coming up here I believe in uh in March I think you can log in to try to get on that and call in I think it's 65 and over and then over 16 if you have other underlying medical conditions look into that one uh, I know PNC Park's doing it too and there's there's different things out there check on that okay that said got a great show for you tonight and we have a little something with the theme of the show right we're doing a little online poll we call it the jagoff poll and the jagoff poll is brought to you by engine house 25 winery okay if you go to eh25.com you can find out everything you need about the great selection of wines that they have there they've got killer reds they've got sauvignon blanc they've got chardonnay they've got rosé they've got everything in between you can't beat engine house 25 i'm not just saying that i actually believe it and if you go to that website or you call them up you get five bucks off per bottle if you mention alone together pittsburgh that's five dollars off per bottle no matter how many bottles you get five bucks off per they're doing curbside they're also doing um free delivery in the 412 during the pandemic 
and um, their tasting room is open by uh, request on occasion. You can find out everything at eh25.com. Check them out. All right, so the in-show poll tonight, there might be more than one. So Dave, tell them what it is. Patrick, we got so many in-show polls. You ready for poll number one? Poll number one. Poll number one. We are doing your favorite fish fry topping. It is active right now. Do you like tartar sauce? Do you like hot sauce? Do you like lettuce and tomato? What are you, a freak? What are you, a creep? What are you, kinky? What are you doing with that tomato near that fish sandwich? It's totally creepy. Now, cheese I can get down with. Frank's Red Hot should be in here. It is not. Oh, yes, it is. Hot sauce, tartar, lettuce and tomato, cheese. I don't know. It's going to be a fishy night. We're up to no good. You're up to no good. We're up to our ears and fish. Have at it. Poll starts now. Tartar right. sauce is winning. Tartar sauce is winning. Okay. All right. So that's it. So it's tartar sauce, hot sauce, lettuce and tomato, and cheese are, are your options. So if you're on Facebook, get in there and do it. If you're listening to the show later on in the day, sorry you don't get to vote. Wow. Tartar did jump out quick. All right. 67, 22, and we just announced it. So uh, get your votes in. Get them going. Keep them going periodically. This, this poll will not go for the whole show. This will only go about the halfway point. And then we'll bring in um, bring in something else. Because if it's not out of the three rivers, you shouldn't be eating it. Right. And that's the thing. Well, you know what? I could tell you that some folklore of the fish fries and fried fish sandwiches and Lenten Fridays. But what would I know about this? I wanted to bring some experts. So we're going to segue them in periodically. And then we're going to have a straight up fish fry battle royal of conversation. But first, I think we should bring out... Uh, our first guest, all right, he's the features writer from uh, the Post Gazette, and he just recently wrote a fantastic article about a, a local fish fry, and which kind of pinged uh, my brain. Wanted to have him on here to talk about some of the origins and stuff. Please welcome Dan Giggler. As we deep dive into some Pittsburgh <laughs> shit, what's happening, Dan? I'm doing all right, Patrick. How are you? Thanks for having me here. Oh, thank you for being with us tonight, man. Thanks for everything you're doing too. So, uh, so let's 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 dive right in here, okay? Let's 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 uh, let's let's take a deep dive into the fryer here, okay? okay. So, so just a question for you. Now, I I grew up in Pittsburgh. The fish fries on Fridays and Lent was always the thing, right? Mm. It was. It's. It, I grew up around it. Is this a national thing or is this just a, is this just like an Allegheny County thing? So it's a, it's a national thing. I mean, I, I'm no uh, uh, theologian or a uh, student of uh, the, the Catholic church, but um, it's a, well, it's a, qua- a semi-national thing. Uh, it, it's a, it, you know, if you, if you're, are you Catholic? I, well, if you went to the fish fries, I guess you're Catholic. Yeah, also. I'm Catholic yeah. yeah. Same. Okay. So I'm not, I'm a lapsed Catholic. We, I do not participate any longer except for uh, fish fries. But, um, you know, it was a tradition in Lent. Uh, if you don't know, you, you know, if you're Catholic, you're not supposed to eat meat except uh, or a, of a warm-blooded animal, uh, but you can eat fish. And so uh, fish and fish fries caught on with uh, waves of European immigrants in the late uh, Euro- European Catholic or Orthodox immigrants in the you know late 1800s, of which we have many uh, in Pittsburgh, all of Pitt- not all of Pittsburgh, but so much of Pittsburgh is is rooted around uh, the immigration waves of the uh, you know late 1800s, early 1900s, et cetera, and so forth. Um, and it just became a part of the community, a part of the churches. Um, you know, it, it almost has less to do with religion as it does with you know your well your ethnic identity if you were Polish or Ukrainian or Italian or whatever. Um, and it took root there and it was just, you know, you're, you're uh, you know, that kind of community thing. And it's, you know, it's really lit. So here's, so, so wherever there are Catholics, there are fish fries. If they were in uh, Pittsburgh or Buffalo or uh, Baltimore or Milwaukee like, or places like that. Um, s- go ahead. I'm sorry. Okay, no, so, so when did they start becoming like a fundraiser or like an option? I know there's many like, like where it's not just, it's not just churches. Yeah. I mean, there are restaurants that are doing it. There are uh, fire halls that are doing yeah. it. Yeah. So, oh, right. You know I mean? Exactly. Like, exactly. Yeah. Right. So that's, so that's the origin of it. And then um, I, I, to tell you the truth, I don't, I don't know that. I think it just became so popular that other uh, places glommed onto it, which is, you know, which is fine. The more uh, the merrier and they're great. I mean, you're, you're right. You have uh, churches, fire halls, um, VFWs, and then restaurants. I would say that, 
while it is it, it was national in that like you know where you know where you had catholics you had fish fries I don't think it's really like that anymore. You don't hear people talk about it the same way they do with such fervor um, as we do around around here, where it's almost like a competitive sport, um, you know, in a good way. Um, well, so, you know, it still exists in other places, but I think, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of like pierogies exist in other places too, but no place has really embraced it so much, I don't think. Yeah, see? Right. I, exactly. Right, so exactly. I've got my I Heart Pierogi shirt on. Yeah, but like, yeah. I, I, I feel you. Who does that? You're I, not gonna nobody. Nobody in Phoenix is gonna have an, one of those shirts on. And if they do, they're from Pittsburgh. They're probably from Pittsburgh. <laughs> they're probably yeah. but especially Phoenix. There's, there's a lot right. of Tommy Amoeba is definitely the hot sauce on his uh, fish sandwich, but malt vinegar with fish and chips. Um, all right, Tommy, thank you. Keep that stuff going in there. Um, all right, so you talked about being a competitive sport here, right? Where it's like. <laughs> It, not just like everybody's trying to one up somebody with a different kind of fish sandwich, different kind of breading, but there are people that go to multiple things. Like it's a competitive sport. So yes. I think I should bring out our next guest, <laughs> Jess Whittington, who, who might be one of those people who competes in those things, who has been to a lot of fish fries. Can we bring out our second uh, fish fry expert, Jess Whittington? Hey Jess. What's up? <laughs> How you doing? Great. Thanks for being here. Thanks for being here with us on a on a deep dive here. So um, I feel like I should like throw a quiz question at you, like in my cousin Vinny when they make Marissa Tomei like know how the car works. But I I, I think we're just gonna <laughs> we're just gonna take your word for it, okay? All right. So okay. um you you've been to some fish fries. How how long have you been frequenting the fish fries, and how many fish fries do you think you've been to? Yeah, so I was thinking about that in preparation for this, and I literally don't know. I cannot pinpoint it because I'm not Catholic, so I did not grow up going to these things. I don't even think I knew they existed until I was well into adulthood. Um, I really just think I realized one day, like, I really love fried fish, <laughs> and I love mac and cheese, and I think it's an awesome combo, so... Um, I don't know. I just like started going. To the, I, I actually do remember like when I first started going up being like, can anyone go or do I have to be a member of this church? Like, do I have to be Catholic? I don't want to take communion. Like, I don't want anything to do with that. So there, I, there, um, there you are. I, there I am. I was excited. Swissville, well, Swissville has a killer sandwich. Um, killer, 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 absolutely. Killer, killer. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know how long it's been. I have to admit, I, I mean, I'm going to guess maybe eight years, nine years. Um, right. Wow. And I go every single weekend every friday so do the math i guess <laughs> so wow that's that's a lot i mean you sent me you sent me a bunch of pictures you have your own yeah. rating system ranking system as it goes here well we have a best fish fry who's that that this was, this is was from years ago number one i mean yeah. uh, so they've been doing this for three years this is community kitchen in hazelwood okay if you have not been everyone listen this friday you're going but go on their website you have to order like in advance I, um Last week I heard was just crazy. There were long waits. I think the word has spread, um, maybe because of my rating system. I don't know. It must have been. Like, <laughs> it must have been your rating system on Instagram. I mean, five but out of five. Everything. You're, they, you're an influencer. Well, uh, maybe. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I don't know. So, all right. So before we before we dive, I'm, everything that I say and that I'm hearing you guys say has is like a is a is a fish reference. I'm like as we dive in. Um, to these things here. Before we do that, we have a quiz going on right now, and I want to see where you guys both stand. Dan, we'll start with you. Okay. All right, side, uh, it's it's side dishes, right? Not side dishes. What, what, what do we have? Toppings. Toppings. Oh, toppings. Uh, you know, I like to uh, just, I mostly like to have the virgin fish uh, just to see, you know, because that's how you can truly judge the breading and the quality of the fish. You don't want to be hiding it there. Uh, but if I'm picking, I'm going hot sauce, uh, uh, maybe ca maybe ketchup. I know that's going to be a oh. popular one. Um, I like the the malt vinegar, um, uh, but I will say that I never had that until um, I went to started going to Piper's Pub, and then when I w went to travel abroad, and that's you know that's the thing there. Now I love that. That is one of my favorite things. But initially, I I didn't know what that was when I was a, a younger fish eater. All right, all right, okay, Jess. Um, toppings. Yeah, so Dan mentioned ketchup. I know it's controversial, but that is definitely my favorite topping. 
Oh, I, thank, I, thank you, thank you. I, I, I was so happy when you said it. Saying that. Yeah. I know. I, I was so happy. It goes you great. Said, yeah. Yes. Yeah, but I, I, a lot yeah. of people hate me for it. Well, <laughs> but I don't know. I, I love it because I'm good. not a tartar sauce fan. Oh, there it is. Um, I do like cheese on a sandwich. I don't think you find that too often at a fish fry. More like a restaurant type of thing. Really? I've been um, told that's a game changer, though. The uh, like American cheese. My I like it myself, but. My father was the king of American cheese, and yeah. then and then he stopped using the bun. He started doing fish on a dish, fish with, on a Ameri- dish. with with American mm-hmm. cheese. That was my yeah. dad's. My, that's my my dad's still doing that to this day. I but love yeah. your dad. Well, tell hey, him. Hey, so do I. But um, <laughs> uh, don't tell him I said so. He's probably watching. Um, <laughs> but um, but yeah, okay. So here's here we are right now with the people voting at home. We've got tartar sauces in the lead. Ketchup is not an option. So, all right, let's just say right now, since no one's going to put lettuce and tomato. No. From now on, lettuce and tomato is ketchup. <laughs> okay, since we've got... So when you when you vote with that right now, you're voting for ketchup. Okay. Um, uh, uh, Danny says, yes, fish queen. And uh, there's a question for you about uh, what fish has the best crunch. Crunch? Oh. Crunch. Okay. Crunch. <laughs> um, well, I like a battered fish. There are some fish fries that have breaded fish. This is another controversy. Mm-hmm. I, I I don't I don't fuck with the breaded fish. I'm sorry. I mean I okay. do. I won't I won't be so mad. I mean I'll be mad, but you know I want a battered fish. I really okay. Do. Can you tell Can you tell the difference really? Yes. Between yes. the bread and the battered. Okay. I'm where Where do you fall Where yes. do you fall on this, Dan? Bat- oh, she's 100 percent right. Batter. Mm-hmm. I mean, there, it's not to say that a breaded fish can be bad, but there's just something like it's the way it almost like well, seals around the fish, and you it, like when you perforate it, this like steam comes out. I mean, you could burn yourself from it. You could be, you really could. But it, I mean, that's that's the way. That's yeah. the truth. Oh, here we go. Here's a good example. Right there, Nancy's Revival. So I went there last year for the first time for oh, a fish man. fry. They're in Wilkinsburg. Awesome yeah. diner. If you haven't been. Highly recommend. Like my husband and I love going there for breakfast. Haven't been in a year, like exactly because of COVID. But um, I, this was like our one of our last meals out because uh, I went. We went like the first weekend. Everything was shut down. They did, um, you know, they were doing their fish fry. We were the only people in the restaurant. <laughs> I have this like sad picture of like no one in there. But um, yeah, they do a breaded fish, which again I don't love. But it was cornmeal breading. Um, oh, not bad, but is this a fish party? So this RIP spirit used to do an awesome fish fry. Oh. It was kind of a shit show. Like you waited in line for literally hours and I don't know if maybe that's why I don't, they don't do it anymore. It was like, they never figured it out, but, uh, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was really good. So yeah, we went there with a bunch of people one year and they had all these, I don't know. I thought these were just strangers. Them. I thought these were just strangers waiting in line with you. Like this is the people that were. This is what that is what happened. Spirit. That is yeah. what happened. Now they're all my closest friends. <laughs> all right. Okay. Well, that's good. See, you, you met them over over fish. I uh, did, especially and, that mermaid at the bottom there. <laughs> and the fish. Right. All right. So while we're talking here, I think we're going to bring out the second poll. We have a second poll that we're going to do that. Let's call. Let's call the. Uh, let's double check what the uh, what the what the toppings was. I'm I'm pretty sure the tartar sauce was going to run run away with it here. I mean, there's also, I mean, there's lots of different ways, right? You could, there's, there's squeezing a lemon on it. There's just lemon and that there's the cheese, but the American cheese is a good way to go. Only one person uh, oh, voted man. for that. Tart- nobody, nobody stepped up and pulled the ketchup. So let's just say that they got two, two, uh, 20% of the vote. Yeah, there. Dan. They definitely beat, they definitely beat the cheese. All right. So the next poll will be coming at us periodically. Pete's going to put that in the can right there. Okay. So I don't know if you guys can pick this, but. What is, has there been anyone who has deviated from the, um, from the, from the script, right? That has done well, or has anyone like really like failed horribly in trying to deviate from the script of the pure fish fry fish sandwich? You know, I've been seeing a lot of menus for this year with pizza on it. Is this like a normal thing? No pizza on their menu for the fish fry. Like, Oh. As a thing you can eat. Is that normal? I, these, I feel like I've never seen that until this year. At restaurants or at like fire No, halls? I'm talking like, because in preparation for this again, I was like looking up like who's doing them this year because obviously shit's crazy. But 
there, I mean, I was looking at different menus. There's tons of places doing pizza yeah, as an option, Max, like in addition to fish. St. Max's in uh, Homestead that I, I went to on Ash Wednesday. I mean, they had, they had, they had uh, the shrimp kebabs. They had, uh, they had pizza, but I think it was, I don't think it was a fish pizza. It was just as an option of like. No, that's what I'm saying. It's not fish it's pizza. So, I'm just, just saying meatless. it's like an option. Oh yeah. It was, they just had a meatless pizza, but they, they had like, like a fish pasta. They had a fish, um, they had uh, shrimp kebabs. They had a number of different things like that just to, just to mix it up. But, um, you know, you were talking about the competitive sport part of it earlier. And, um, you know, I think, so I did, an, a, a, this is perhaps your, uh, uh, your your uh, like baby boomer alter uh, ego, Jess, is this guy David Shore from West Mifflin, who is he's the cod father, and I, I wrote a, a a profile piece about him a couple years ago, and this guy's a nut, and he's great, but I mean he has it like from Aliquippa, uh, like all the way down the Ohio Valley, all the way down to the Mon Valley. He's been to every single place. And for him, he says, you know, the way he says it is every, everybody has a fish, but it's the sides. The sides are what make a place special. And he would talk about this place in Glassport that made potato pancakes. And there was one in Baldwin that had a donut machine. And, you know, this place, like at St. Max's, they do like a potato halushki, which I never even heard of. Um, oh, wow. You know, so every place. Well, we've got yeah. some breaking news here. We've got breaking um, news. Poll number two is up right now. Favorite side. Oh, fish fry carbs on the side. Pick your favorite carb on the side of the fish fry. How about it, Pittsburgh? <laughs> we've got pierogi, mac and cheese, halushki, uh, and French fries in general. So get your vote on there right now. And if there's something else that we don't have on that list, hit it in the comments section. Get it on there. So we're going to find out... Uh, what uh, Rachel was just asking about what's, what's Jess's favorite side dish. Uh, soy sauce and wasabi, also good on the thing. Frank's Red Hot is also good. Uh, Tim just said, what's up, Tim? Uh, fish fry, Miller Lite, Modelo, or Sav Blanc? Everybody's, everybody's coming in with polls here. So go on, Dave. Finish, finish up, buddy. I didn't oh, mean to cut I, you off. That's all. I mean, that was it. We went right right to the, I mean, that was like, uh, you know, on cue. I mean, perfectly with the sides. I mean, uh, that was a hell of a seg. What's that? <laughs> Was that was a hell of a seg. seg. That was a hell of a seg. Yeah, I mean, myself, I'm gonna go halushki or mac and cheese. Only be, and as much as I love pierogies, but like having them together is, uh, you. T I mean, if you do that, you do it for dinner because there's a nap coming afterwards. If you're gonna do it in the middle of the day, you call you call work <laughs> off because that's you know you're not gonna be able to do it. That's too much too much for the belly in one sitting. You're weak, Dan. Oh damn, <laughs> Jess. <laughs> So, yes, talk I'll, tell you, to me. No, I'll tell you what. That discretion think, is the better part of valor, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> I, I believe that's how the saying goes. <laughs> first no, of all, I know my limits that, now. Yeah, well, get me that guy's <laughs> number. I want to like go to fish fries with him. He sounds David. Like, yeah. Oh yeah. yeah you yeah. guys have to meet. You have Jess, to meet. Yeah. Jess, you need to meet the cod father. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm interested. Yeah. I think Looking it needs up. to Perfect. happen. All right, I, I want to say something. Please and do. I'm being dead ass serious. Like, I think the holy grail of fish fries is when they serve both mac and cheese and pierogies. So mm -hmm. I'm anti Dan right now. I'm so sorry, but that is not too much. If there's no such thing as too many carbs, like I said, I love a beige meal. I, Did I, say that? I think Maybe it's not, a bad I idea. I just said it's not my, I can't, I, like, I can't do it anymore. I can't, I wish, you know, we, we all, I mean, time I, is un, father time is undefeated. Well, Look, here we go. Unless, unless you're an, Tom Brady. <laughs> I mean, that's, you here's know, an that's excellent, um, Here's an excellent <laughs> example of a fish fry with pierogies and mac and cheese. And this one had vegetables. There's I something green on nice. that plate, and it making it's making me uncomfortable. No, I got to tell you, it was nice. It was nice. It cut through the meal a little bit. It was nice. This is another one. Like, they haven't done it in a few years. This was the Serbian club down the south side. Oh, I remember that. I know the this Serbian club. This was like uh, a bomb ass fish two, fry two blocks from my house where my, uh, my wife is giving the thumbs down though she off, off camera she what raylan would you want to you know uh, raylan you want to pop in and tell us why you don't like the serbian club why you please, hate serbians i've been there many a night well you know <laughs> she spends a lot of time in the, the serbian club i was savvy with it but you know i she's, loved she's it tough. She's tough. And th that is the fish on a dish this is fish on a dish which Again, this is going to be. Oh, we got a picture of the Codfather. I love there the he Godfather, is. Godfather, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, I need that. Um, I like fish on a dish better than on a sandwich, I have to say. Really? Okay. I, I do. Mean, I can I can feel that, but sometimes if you get the right mm -hmm. bun, if you get the right bun, that bun yeah. is a thing. And sometimes especially, it's too much. did know. you guys ever go can to I Arm? I'm so bold as to Please. suggest that if you are uh, have if you if your lack of a bun is that the same as my lack of a pierogi? I mean, because there's a carb like substitute wow. like a deficit substitution going on there, you know. Okay. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll, okay. I accept that. Just gonna throw, just gonna. Okay. All right. We're, we're not in a fight anymore. <laughs> just pointing it out. Just pointing I mean, it out. you could also you could also just make a couple pierogi and put the fish in between, and then well, you could do that. Yeah. Think about that. Did I blow That's your mind? Incredible. And then, and then, and then, and then you put a bit of halushki and mac and cheese on that, and it becomes like a a a, a fried fish like Permani's knockoff. <laughs> oh my god! Because you get you get the whole meal in each bite. Think about it. There's that. There was a there was a shot thing there right there. Okay, so um, keep. I want to keep the conversation going, but I'm getting a I'm getting some news from the booth here that Chef Kate Romaine. She's was, fuming. Was, I think she's fuming about the cheese. I saw her shaking I, her head. I think we need to bring in. We need to bring her in early. We need to bring her in. Throwing early. her, her fists up at the screen. We're bringing in. The, bringing in the righty. We're br we're bringing her out of the bullpen. Bring her in early. Here she comes. Okay, there's, okay. Okay. So before we get to your segment, I would like you to join this one and let's let's join this fish fry conversation. Do you have an opinion on American cheese on a piece of fish? I have an opinion about. Ketchup? What the fuck are we talking about? Ketchup? Oh, <laughs> oh man! <laughs> it's nope. delicious. It's delicious. I love it. <laughs> I love it. I I do want to say something, Kate. So um, my husband's from Scotland. So when we go over there, there's a lot of fried fish, you know, chip everywhere. shops and things like that. It's literally yeah. everywhere. Um, okay. And I do get a lot of looks for my love of ketchup because they just yeah. douse everything in malt vinegar. I mean, everything. Yeah. He I even the douses the mac and cheese with the malt vinegar. So, um, so we're getting some feelings on the chat feed. Amanda thinks ketchup is disgusting, Ooh. and and I'm not gonna go as far. I'm not. I don't Ooh, put yes. ketchup on like the fried fish or the um, like a steak or anything. But no, I do not. No, I mean, no, that's crazy. We're not animals here. Okay. Yeah. All right. But, but we're, I'm not saying, the, we're not the we're not 45, my friend. All right. All right. All right. So we get that, but like I um. I don't know. I, I ketchup is good for some things. French yeah. fries on occasion. Some things are better, yeah. but th like, it's a condiment. Ketchup. I like ketchup on scrambled eggs at a diner. Mm. I know that's, that's you're just you're disgusting. You disgust no. me. Ketchup on a scrambled eggs. Is I was joking. I was joking because she said she was <laughs> disgusted by. I was backing you guys up before you come after me. I was, <laughs> I was, I was back in. I was back in the guest. I was in the middle. I put the. Uh, ketchup on the uh, home fries like at Ritter's. Yeah. I, I, need, oh, I, need, yeah I, need, I need ketchup for that. Yeah. But anyway. You go to, what's that place? The Waffle House to get the, the home fries with like the onion, all the shit. Onions covered, smothered, leathered. And then put ketchup on it. So good. But anyway. Okay, okay so enough about that. But, ba but back to the back to the fish here. The one thing that I was saying before I brought you in, Kate, did you guys ever go to Armand's? Love it. In Bloomfield for a fish sandwich. They don't do the fish sandwiches. It's not there anymore. But um, it was just it was just a year round. It used to have like the world's best fish sandwich sign hanging yeah, out. The front sign. Of it. Yeah. 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 So the bun was about yay, right? And the fish was about y yay. Yeah. Right? So really and truly, the bun was only like the bun was like a treat. Like, you know what I mean? Like you would eat your way to it and it would just be like a nice little treat in the middle on, on your way to it. Or you it folded the, things over, you couldn't hold. It was the vehicle to get it to your mouth. You just, it was just a holder. You just use the bun. Yeah, yeah. So what's your what's your take on cheese, Kate, before we start talking side dishes? I can do cheese. I okay, do cheese good. on occasion, you know, but I'm mostly a hot sauce, vinegar and tartar sauce. Oh shit. I mean, tart on the side, I kind of like make my way down the sandwich and add a condiment as I go. I also want to clarify, I don't want to be like, if I get a full fried fish sandwich, like I'm not laying, <laughs> lathering it top to bottom with ketchup. I mean, I, I like, I don't, I don't know when all of a sudden people said, oh, you can't put ketchup on a hot dog. Like this is some oh, of the yeah. elitist garbage from New York or Chicago or something like that. And I don't Absolutely. want any part of it. So there, that's number one. But like I'll have it like so. 
again, I, you know, my, 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 my favorite fish, you know, not all year round is, is Piper's pub and they have great chips too. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I'll hit the shit out of it with the malt, but I'm putting a, a, a reservoir of ketchup on the side. You dip it. And we dub, we, we double dip and it's, it's fine. I'm, I just, I just want you to know where I'm coming from on this. I'm not, you know, I'm I with you. I, Dan, I like your point about the, so ridiculous. the virgin. I like your point about the virgin fish. Oh um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to taste the as in its own essence first, and then I agree. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, if I don't do ketchup, I would do just a virgin fish. Yeah, yeah. Well, Danny uh, just just said uh, you've cod to be kidding me. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. That's a good. Okay. One. <laughs> All right, all right. So, okay, so, He's so ketchup. really funny. <laughs> really funny. Oh gosh. <laughs> yes, yes. All right. So, uh, to go to get deep fried here, um, that was worse <laughs> than all of them. So I just made you guys all look good by lowering the bar. Um, okay, so that was it. So, all right. So side dishes. Dig it in here. Um, Ready to close this one because we got another one in the hopper. Okay, we got another oh. one in the hopper. So get your votes in quick. All right, guys, wh where do you fall on this here, Kate? Jess, we I, already heard from Dan ish. I, I gotta have them all. I can't, I, I'm like loaded up. I, I, there is no one of these I could eliminate. Jess, Sorry. That's fair. Okay. Um, I mean, like I said before, I do think the Holy Grail is mac and cheese and pierogies, but um, I, I literally uh, map out the mac or the um, fish fries I go to based on whether or not they serve mac and cheese. That is my all time favorite food. Like, I would eat it every day if I could. So uh, I have to go mac and cheese. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. What is this? Oh, is this from like Get Go or something? Yeah, yeah. I think this this looks like a ding 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 ding. <laughs> this is this is like the Get Go. <laughs> Ring the bell! It's coming ashore. <laughs> the captain. I feel like I've seen this on from, like a gas pump go. or something. Yeah. Not, uh, that's where you got it from. The the the, the beer battered cod. The captain has returned. I can't believe we're plugging of all the things we could be plugging right now. It's uh, available it's, now at your local get go. <laughs> Order online for pickup. All right. all right. Okay. All right. So, so everybody likes those, but I will say something here the, when things get things, actually, this would not happen in Arizona, but things got heated about fish and how you eat the fish already in this thing. I know it was ketchup that kind of caused, caused the riff here, but uh, we have another poll here that I have no clue what it is. So uh, they're gonna pull another one out in the hopper. Let's call. It, let's close that Look one. Look deep down. in your heart, Patrick. <laughs> Coming back at you. It's all about the ketchup. Ketchup oh, on your ooh, fish. Yeah. Cover it up. Keep it away. Only on eggs. <laughs> we right. know how scrambled Kate votes. How about you, Pittsburgh? I think they did this poll just so he could call her scrambled Kate. <laughs> I think that's the only reason this poll was 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 made here. Uh, it's it's pretty pretty good, pretty pretty like good. It. All right, all right. So votes are already coming in, only on eggs. Okay. All right. This is this is it. Um, Thank this you. is team Ke Rachel's on team ketchup though. All right. Mm -hmm. So I I do not have a hatred for ketchup, but I just don't use it on things. Right. I mean, oh. I don't use. It. I'll put it on a hot dog. All day for you, Patrick. I don't mind. Good. I'll put Good. it on a cheese steak, which is a little bit weird. I'll put cheese it on a burger. Steak. Ooh. Well, Wait, is, is, are said, we Kate? talking like a real yeah. cheese steak or like some steakums in the freezer? A oh. steakum. <laughs> <laughs> like I'll oh. put I'll put anything on a steakum. Like oh, you know yeah. what I mean? Like Got like like literally yeah. like what's in the what's what's in the what's in the refrigerator? Like I'll put anything to just. It's like getting, uh, it's like it's just like getting banana peppers at Subway. You got to get something that tastes like something. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like the hamburger, make hot you feel dog, alive. French fries, and fried fish is like a cousin of the French fry. Oh, and onion rings, any fried anything really. It's fried donut. ketchup works you good. You would put it on a donut. Oh, wow! Well, you wouldn't put that's, ketchup on a that's donut. A, that's a sweet fried thing, savory it's fried. Sweet. Yeah. What if what if there was? I mean, um, I'm looking at really hard right now. I've never tried it because it sounds <laughs> weird. What, but what if there was? It. What if there was a sardine in said donut? Would you put ketchup on it then? Yes. Uh, I mean, I, I would dip. Would it still be a donut? <laughs> uh, what if there was a hole in the donut and you just wrapped the sardine on the inside around and wrapped it in there 
and like a surprise like you bite into a donut and there's a sardine surprise i'm trying to keep with the fish thing here well before we start <laughs> no, i got up. it i got i'm just uh wrapping my head around this is it still sweet, sweet though is it still sweet <laughs> yeah, i would so yeah it's the, it's the regular it donut. i mean you know it's fried dough it's fried dough okay mm -hmm. all right so it's fine so ketchup is that okay corn dogs ketchup yes, yes? no Hard yes. i hate a corn dog I hate them. Ketchup that and mustard. I don't know why I hate them, but I, hate, I love cornbread. I love hot dogs. I just can't get into corn. I don't know what the deal is. I don't, I, I don't know what the deal is. I just can't do it. One time a year at Kennywood. That's it's right across from the potato patch. You can get corn dogs and okay. ketchup goes on both of them. That's the spot. I'm with that. Yeah. 100%. Mustard, Someone sent a I video. Oh, no, no, mustard too. Mustard too. Believe me. It's fine. All right, yeah. you guys talk Nothing amongst yourselves. I'm looking, for, I'm looking for for a video they, they here. Cover each other. Talk yeah. amongst yourselves for a minute here. I'm going to pass over the thing because there's a video that I'm on the hunt for, which is a corn dog actually being made. Oh uh, boy! I, I will find it. And I'm curious. I, so I tell you what, it was stuffed, right? It's also a stuffed corn dog. So it's the I can't. Oh wow! Look, bunny, oh, bunny, shit. bunny's on team ketchup. Well, I'll, I'll, oh, I'll it's find organic. It. It's organic. Good for you, bunny. My damn, <laughs> the best for Bunny. My phone died, so I cannot find it. My phone died. There's a video of it, and it's like the most disgusting looking thing that you see. And then they, they're you're cramming cheese in there, and they're doing all this stuff. And then they, they batter it. It looks horrible. Then they fry it, and when they pull it out of the fryer, it looks like the most amazing thing you've ever seen in your life, and you can't wait to eat it. <laughs> I'm just saying, there's there's things that can happen here. So okay, before we start to like transition here into another segment, is there anything you'd like to? like leave us with here talking about the fried fish and what we do we, is this is there anything that we didn't cover here tonight with breading and with batter and uh grease what about dessert options oh mm. oh so we, yeah we we've done a fish fry at the radish the last four four years this is the first year we're not going to do it and it was always a debate obviously we always debated on the sides but also like the dessert, like the sweet thing at the end. Like what, what, what pairs is it? with that? I think anything. Ice cream. If I can, if I can take, if I can take that. Go for it. Yeah. <laughs> it's the most polite guest we've ever had. He raises his hand every time until it's time to talk. So I don't even have a sweet tooth, but uh, I, you know, like I'm, I, I don't. But uh, you know, I went to this this fish fry that I went to last Wednesday. Um, the best part, not the best part of it, the, the food was very good, but the best part of it was, um, these three old blue hairs, uh, who were just awesome with their masks on and f like working the, uh, working the table there. That was all stuff that people had baked and brought in oh themselves to sell. And I mean, that's, that's the answer. I don't even, wouldn't even care if I liked it. You got to buy it. I agree. You know? I like when you can tell um, so it's like they just made awesome. it. Yeah. That was pretty awesome. Um, you know, and, and things like that, I mean, are, are what make it, what make but, it special. Uh, you know, I love that stuff. I, I think that'll get me every time. <laughs> I'm, I'm with yeah. you, man. 100%. 100%. The bake sale, yeah, when you've got that, the story's there. That's kind of what everybody wants out of a fish fry. They don't need the gourmet. Um, I've, we've, yeah. got a, we've got a blueberry pie option. We've got a lemon square for dessert. Um, Donna thinks that lemon, that dessert wasn't a thing because of Lent. You don't give up everything for Lent, <laughs> um, but, but that could I be agree. a thing here. Uh, Sarah wants a hush puppy right now, and <laughs> yeah. uh, Tara's only into m uh, mustard on her corn dogs. Um, ketchup is closing it. right now. Ketchup is closing. Ketchup is closing. Cover it with ketchup. Wow. <gasps> wow. What has happened what here? Did you? Did, Jess has been texting people. Right no. Now. No. I, I think Dan and I have been vindicated. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, Tommy does not want the idea of a sardine and a donut uh, crossing. I mean, the I'm, I'm with Tommy. To be honest, you know. <laughs> Okay. That's fine. Happening right now, poll number five. Who serves the best fish? Is it the firemen versus the church ladies versus the get-go? Get dirty, Pittsburgh! Drag yourself down to the bottom of the sea. It is Darwinism, fish fry style. Oh, my God. All right. Well, there's, that, that's one last vote. One last vote. One last vote before we go. 
Um, where do you guys fall on this? Firemen, uh, church ladies, or get go? Well, I will say, um, you know, I already talked about my top number one fish fry community kitchen. I'm like obsessed, highly recommend. Mm -hmm. But my number two is the Swissvale Fire Department. They're incredible. Killer. One of the best mac and cheeses in Pittsburgh. The fish is unreal. That's another one. You have to call it like 11 to get your dinner because they sell out every night or every Friday, whatever. So I'm going to go firemen. And, there's, and Swissville, they're still rolling in COVID right now. Same. Yeah. Same, same, and, I mean, a little bit more, a little more distance and stuff. They're but, like yeah. all always pretty much take out. They do have a little sit in area in the right. fire like hall or whatever, but it's, it's super small anyway. So go check them out. Yeah. And that is my favorite fish fry and it's not too far from my house. Um, but I'm going to say in general, as like a genre, I would say church ladies bring it to the table. Yeah. Okay. That's as, like a, as a grouping. I, 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 I can't really, the, the, the number firemen and church ladies. It's like, this is, this is a universal thing. You can't, it's like, it's like picking you between your kids it. when it comes to fried fish. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was <laughs> an evil laugh uh, from Mansueto. But yeah, I will give shout outs to, there are restaurants that specialize in uh -huh. fried fish sandwiches year round, you know, like, like Grant's Bar. Um, you're never going to get a, not a great fried fish sandwich at Grant's Bar. And they also do the shrimp and stuff. So like the year round stuff, like Armand's used to be, you could always get that. It didn't have to necessarily be Lent. Just wanted to give shout outs to the people who, you know, do this on a regular and not just. I, I'd like to give a shout out to another one. Um, Emil's in Rankin. Emil's, sure. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, God, I tried them for the first time last year. Unreal. They're off the chart. Good. And they're, the chart. they're Also, their burgers are, are, are a different kind of crazy. I've never had, I mean, I literally, that was the only time I, I had food from there. I ordered the, the, it takeout last year. It was unbelievable. The fish sandwich is off the chain there, seriously. I mean, I mean, I would mm -hmm. stop there on my way to the theater all the time because my theater mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, like I would bring, I would bring stuff to everybody from there. But what, like the, the fish sandwiches are great, but I had like, like my crew that was building sets and stuff. I, I sent them there. I was like, get some burgers. And they came back and they couldn't move. <laughs> they were just like I, I can't it was just like i got like like literally what they were saying they had to take a nap like it was like i can't i can't work anymore i just ate too much at noon to uh to, to finish the day but yeah animals they're they're fan they're fantastic you can't Amazing. miss them either uh, they got they got signage all around great call thank you for giving a shout out to them dan and jess thank you so much you got something else quick, to talk to I just wanted to I, I didn't get to chime in on that i just wanted to say that you're all vindicated because uh the Codfather, who I mentioned earlier, uh, uh, his favorite and his family's favorite uh, sectarian uh, fish fry, if you will, was the, also the Swissvale Volunteer Fire Department. They look forward to it every year. In fact, his future son-in-law is a, a young Jewish man who was uh, introduced to all of this when he started dating his daughter. And he waxes poetic about someday you'll, you'll find your, your Swissvale. And uh, so that was that was his absolute favorite. But I want to vote for the church ladies only because I want to paint a picture for you because it was just so perfect um, last week when you have the juxtaposition of like the church serving these things and then the unwashed all of us that go to them. So um, I'm at St. Max's last week and this guy pulls up and like a he was like in a Verizon truck or something like that. Like he was a lineman or something He's on a very loud cell phone call, um, like just motherfucking somebody and talking about somebody else that they work with. And like, do you think that son of a bitch is ever going to have your back? Fuck him. Blah, 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 this, that, whatever. Hangs up, goes get ash. <laughs> he gets his fish. This old lady. <laughs> it was just like, that's it. This is so perfect. This is exhibit A why I love this stuff so much uh it's just so much fun i mean and uh i just i couldn't let that go i'm sorry to me to, to make the segment go too long don't worry about it that's exactly what the segment's for that was the perfect yeah. that was the perfect but you're like the segue guy like, <laughs> like that's the second time well all right we're gonna wrap this up um we're gonna talk to kate here in a minute but we're wrapping up deep dive into pittsburgh shit um tonight's topic was the legendary fish fries in the area 
I think we just kind of scratched the surface here tonight. So maybe maybe we'll do part two next week and uh, and, and dive in because <laughs> how long does Lent go? Um, it's like just, six more weeks, I think, right? Yeah, yeah it's, it's like one is out. Week. <laughs> it's only if the Messiah Sorry. sees a shadow. <laughs> but um, I'm sorry. When Jesus I'm sorry. sees a shot, yeah, I think that's what it is. Anyway, all right. Dan, Dan, thank you so much. We check check out uh, all of Dan's writing at the PG and everywhere else. Uh, Jess, we got to have you back here another time to talk about this. Dan, you too. If you guys have anything coming up you want to chat with, talk, come on back. All right. All right. Th th thanks, guys. We'll see you guys soon. You. We got a we got a parlay. We got a parlay here um, to. Uh, to everyone's favorite Thursday night segment, What Kate Ate with Kate Romaine. Chef Kate Romaine from Black Radish Kitchen decides to go to a different, different takeout places and delivery places all week to let us know what's fantastic, what's still good, how the delivery is, and if it comes in hot. Uh, here she is to talk more. She's been here for a while. Here's Kate Romaine. What's up, Kate? What's so, up? I think I'm frozen. Am I frozen? You're not, you're not frozen. I can see you. Oh, okay. I can see you with your fancy new lighting. I can't see you. So oh, you I'm can't... just going to go with this. I don't okay, know just, what's Just happening. go with it, smile, because right now on the screen, um, it's uh, it's you, me, and Bunny are on the screen right now. Uh, okay. Ray, Ray Lynn uh, likes uh, Kate's uh, condiment procession. That's how to do it. <laughs> and maybe with a little pool of ketchup on the side of the plate. Okay, I'm with that, Ray Lynn. Yes. 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 Okay. I'm going to try um, ketchup. I am going to go for it. I mean... All right. I, tr I mean, you couldn't have better uh, advocates for the fish fries on. So if they say ketchup's the way to go, I'm, I'm going to try it. Alan so. says salt and sauce was 100% required. All right. I'm with that, yeah. Alan. I feel that. All right. Yeah, so I'm, like, I'm so hungry for a fucking fish sandwich. I want a fish sandwich right, right now. now. I oh want a fish God. sandwich right now. And <laughs> I, it's probably too late to put the order in for uh, for, the, for Swissville Fire Hall. But yeah, the fish fries. I mean, if you see a sign for a fish fry, you know, go to it. Uh, check it out. So anyway, yeah. obviously you didn't go to a fish fry this week, but what did you do? What, where did Kate Romaine go this week? I didn't go to a fish fry this week. I didn't go to as many places as I as I normally do. I was, um, I got stuck down in Maryland in a snowstorm for a little bit. Um, so what I did do, um, having like a lot of work to do with, playing catch up at work, um, I got Grubhub Sushi Okay. From sushi too. Okay, well, it's from Sushi too. so you got to finish with that. That pause was was twisted. I got Grubhub Sushi, cricket, cricket, from a gas station. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? It's, Just to see what would happen. Okay, Grubhub Sushi from Sushi too. Yeah, I mean, I haven't been to Sushi too in a while. I, it's, I get nervous about doing Sushi to go which is totally stupid you know um totally stupid but i have you ever gotten sushi from like whole foods or something all the time but that's the same it would be it would be <laughs> like worse there than sushi to go yeah it's, if you think I, about I don't, it and it's I know, awesome I, I know i get it all i used to get it all the time it's so easy to pick up it doesn't feel like i'm putting something terrible in my body mm -hmm. and like i can keep working i mean that was kind of the thing it's like i was tired like and just needed something to eat didn't want to eat anything crappy or heavy um it was so cute it was like all perfectly packaged i just i couldn't for some reason i i just i ate like half of a roll which was delicious i got an eel roll with i think um, i'm looking at a picture of it yeah like tempura shrimp okay i see that um, and my favorite thing, which is seaweed salad. I just, mm. I, I, I could eat like bowls of that stuff. And that stuff is so ridiculously good for you. Yeah. It's like the best food. It's like a superfood. It is like a superfood and you do feel good like eating it. It doesn't feel like it's going to bog you down. Um, I've just uh, been eating like garbage comfort. Not, I mean, not that comfort food is garbage, but I've been eating a lot of garbage through the just, entire we, pandemic. So I'm just talking like, we just talked about deep fried fish and like pierogies and lots of mm. other side dishes that are deep fried for about an hour. I know so, and I wanted so bad. Okay, all right. So 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 everybody's kind of been going through that. What is that? Like the COVID fifteen's like the freshman fifteen in, yeah. in, in college. But all right, so so what what else you got here? So you the seaweed salad, 
just killer. Yeah, it was it was delicious. Um, and a a tuna roll. So it was good. It was really good. I mean, I haven't I haven't been to sushi too in probably five years. But um, you know, it was one of those days I was just exhausted. I I ordered Grubhub. I over over tipped because Grubhub to. drivers are also people that we need to be taken care of. Um, that's it. You know. Yeah. Complicated sometimes, but to think about ordering through those services just because they do take a per- percentage of that stuff, but make sure you're tipping because those are also part of people's jobs. They're 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 getting they're getting food out of the restaurants and in your hands. And so the they're, other they're, thing, they're doing it for you. Uh, Tara yeah. May said seaweed and octopus salad is the bomb energy food. Yeah. Go on, Kate. Yeah. Um, the I did, however, indulge in. I went to the East End Brewery, which I'm. I don't know. Can you guys see me? I can't. I, I can't yeah. see you. Um, um, I got this East Carnegie beer. I mean, Dave might have something to say about this, but basically, if you go on there, they're doing pizza. Um, Cheryl is over there. Um, took over the kitchen. She's doing a, a mostly pizza menu, but they have this awesome. You know, it's a no brainer. It's like the first thing on their menu. It's, it's, I think it's called like a beer and chill package. And it's two, four packs of beer. Mm. It's two pizzas, one cheese, one pepperoni. It's homemade pickles by Cheryl. It's a Axel's pretzel with honey mustard. Oh, wow. For 60 bucks. I mean, oh, wow. Yeah. It's a, it was like a no brainer. I was like, this is great. I don't have to make any decisions. And both of the beers that they gave me were delightful. Um, this East Carnegie situation, I, I, it's so good. It's so good. And then the other beer that I got was called Loophole, which is a, like a dry filter. Super easy drinking beers, both of them. So I can't uh, well, say enough about it. I'm, I'm good with the Pilsner. I'm not the IPA guy. But um, yeah, I would, I would, I would be into that. That sounds amazing. Now, that was East End Brewing, right around the corner here. Yeah. So I did. I mean, I I ordered online, really easy through their website. Mm-hmm. Um, they do curbside pickup, so you can you can pull right up, text them, and or call them, and they'll bring it right out to your car. I did go in because I love those guys. They're um, fantastic. They're great, and Lisa Ann works there. Oh, really? She helps out. Scott and I haven't seen her in years. I love her. That's amazing. so it's just good to see familiar faces. Scott uh, has we've half, been working half on... half faces, but it's good to see them in yeah. person. Yeah, everybody yeah. was masked. Yeah. Lots of social distancing. Definitely wanted to give everybody a hug in there. Did not, but it was really it was great um, and really easy. So easy to do. It was ready in twenty minutes. The pizza was delicious. So. Amazing, dude. That's yeah. that's fantastic. You just blew my mind here. This is I am I am on this. Yeah, I would be a yeah, I would be a fool. I'd be a I'd be a fool not to at this point right now. This yeah. is great, Kate. You 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 find the best shit. Did you go anywhere else? That's it. That's okay, it. Okay, good, yeah, good, good. We're just cooking a lot of food at the radish. So, and uh, what's 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 popping at um the uh, Allegheny Eats? So Allegheny Eats is moving right along. P- uh, we are starting to introduce. Black Rash is going to change up their um, menu that they're offering to consumers. Um, that's going to change, I think, in the next week or two. So there's some new offerings coming from the restaurants. Also, two new restaurants have just um, are just getting onboarded. We have Scratch um, Food and Beverage coming up. Oh, great. They, yeah. Don does great food. I was super bummed. I missed the wing night that they did the other night. Um, I want to do that if they do it again. Um, and Square Cafe is going to oh, be on. Oh, fan- so, fantastic. So, yeah, so there's going to be a lot to choose from. Um, old school. You know, it's funny. We had Square Cafe on a bunch and, and Don on early on because they were doing so much new stuff when we were doing the show, and we faded away. I mean, the last time Don was on, I think we had a lookalike contest with him and Dan Cortez. <laughs> Don won. Don, 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 Don won. <laughs> Uh, that, that, that's fantastic. So, uh, and if you, if you guys don't know Allegheny Eats, okay, tell everybody where the, where the proceeds go and how it's set up. So it's set up that for every meal that you order, um, as a consumer, 
that also buys a meal for a restaurant worker. You know, obviously we all know that the restaurant community uh, hospitality scene has been hit pretty hard by the pandemic. So mm-hmm. this was kind of set up to help feed the workers that are out of work, that are still in work but not making enough money. Um, we're working with Sustainable Pittsburgh, Chatham, Kraft, Pasta, um, the Food Bank, 412 Food Rescue, the Pittsburgh Workers Aid people. Um, there's so many great organizations that got involved. The city was involved. Um, mm-hmm. To put this together, um, it's a great program. It's just, it's starting to get legs. It's starting to get the word out there. We've done, I think, 9,000 meals. Um, I heard the other day for restaurant workers. Um, so you can go on, if you purchase these, <clears throat> it goes back into the program to get meals to these workers. Also, if you are an industry professional, you can go on there and redeem a free meal for yourself. It gets delivered to your house or you can pick up, but I mean, you get delicious food from these great restaurants delivered to your house. Um, Baby's Kitchen is on there. Kayla from Casa Brazil, the Vandal, all the food is fantastic. And fantastic as I said, choices. yeah, um, having Square Cafe and Dawn get on board too is just going to make it so much more. Cheryl, Cheryl just chimed in and said, thanks for the love. Oh my God. You know, the only thing that sucks is I dropped the fucking pickles. I started to eat them on the way home in the car because I'm that girl. And uh, I fucking spilled them straight. So <laughs> but, but did you did you just put them back in or did you throw them away? Or did you leave? I mean, <laughs> I did, did they fall on your lap? Did they fall on the street? Did they fall in your car? I mean, they, they fell into the street. But I mean, I got uh-huh. I got them in my face while I was in the car, but I didn't get a picture of it. And I wasn't going to pull my camera up. Dan, 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 uh, chimed in a, a, a website for you to check out with some deep Creek seafood, uh, com or a site that you need to check out. Kate, Kate's watching blind right now. So she can't yeah. see the, the thing Actually, here. It's, just, it's a, a beautiful picture of Dan Giggler. Just he's still, on, he, he's still on the screen, the full screen of Dan, <laughs> just smiling. That's all you're seeing right now. Exactly. It's perfect. There's Dan in person. You can't even see him. I was gonna say, uh, if you if Kate, if you want if you want to reboot, I'm gonna I got to get today's segment here. Yeah. But uh, is there so, anything happening with uh, the radish that people can get in on uh, before we say goodbye? You know, we have belly baskets that are going up this week or that are up for sale this week and all through March. Um, Dan, Chef Dan made um, this amazing hot and sour cabbage soup that has so much ginger that just immediately makes you feel healthy and also. Uh, this next week, we're doing um, a carrot marmalade, which is just one of several items that you get in these packages. So go to the Black Artist website, shameless promotion, and uh, check out all things. It's not shameless. Have. It can't go wrong. And snacks just moved over your shoulder. You can't see yourself, but sna- no, snacks yeah. snacks like woke up and just started licking a little bit. So yeah. that, that's exciting. That, we're, we're excited about that movement oh, from yeah. from snacks is good especially when you can't see behind you um <laughs> so that we're showing a video right now of some slow motion cream that happening at, at your spot uh tell us about what this is that you can't see yeah so um we started um a delivery that goes out on thursday it's called our classic classics pop-up and basically it's it's those old school dishes we did beef burger on I can't even mm. say that word. It's French. Um, pot pie, chicken pot pie. And this week we did um, chicken piccata. Oh, God. Next week, we're it's going on sale tomorrow, but we're doing like a throwback to pole eyes. Oh. Hill, it's going to be like lemon sole and green bean almondine and mashed potatoes and like a chocolate cake with raspberry. So uh, if you go to the little radish market, you can get on that so this whipped cream was going out today with the chicken piccata with um a olive like a blood orange olive oil cake oh that sounds delicious yeah. all right so so you guys want to check out what's going on at blackradishkitchen.com whenever you get some free time to find out how to make yourself happy Thanks, uh, kate all right so i'm gonna bring out day here for some local brews if you want to pop back in talk some beer stuff uh that would be great but i would do a refresh uh, yeah, on your screen so you can so you can see us so um so kate thank you for another fantastic installment of Thanks, what babe. kate ate we will see you uh this coming thursday for another installment who knows where she'll go who knows the magic that she'll find and share with you what kate ate with kate romaine all right 
As things go here, it is not Friday, it is Thursday, but because tomorrow night we're getting taken over with Pittsburgh Cares, which is a fantastic event that you guys need to tune in for and watch. Um, we're going to bring out our next guest, uh, Helper High Water, is happening tomorrow, Friday at 8 o'clock. Before we bring out our next guest, I want to give a shout out to another one of our sponsors, Farm to Table. Okay, Farm to, If you go to farmtotablepa.com, you can find out everything you need from sustainability to keeping it fresh, keeping it local, where farmers markets are, where to get your CSAs, where the farms are, who's doing what, who's growing what, where you can go. And like la every Wednesday night, uh, we do a different farm to table segment. Uh, last night was Elisa from the Emerald, uh, the marketplace at Emerald Valley and uh, blew my mind again. So be sure to check out what they're doing there. If you're looking for a uh, farmer's market that you can find online from about 15 or 20 different farms, Brought, brought and delivered to your door, including libations. So please check them out and go to uh, farmtotablepa.com, find out about that. Um, so Tommy wants to know why sn did Snacks and Bunny ever meet? I do not think so. I do not think that happened, but we can work on that uh, the, if these uh, COVID times happen. But without further ado, I want to bring out our next guest. Uh, here he is. He's been waiting patiently as we ran a little long with the fish segment. Here he is, the man, the myth, the legend, Dave Bracey, to talk about some local things brewing. <laughs> good, man? What's happening, man? Oh, not much, man. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm drinking beer, as, as I typically do. Um, this, is, this is nice. I, uh, I got shipped. I, I, took, I took a trip. I took a, a little bit of a road trip. Um, went out to Ohio. And I got back, and there was beer in the mail for me as well, and I was just like, "Holy shit!" So um, it's a it's a it's a beerful day, um, and I'm I'm very excited. Uh, the the to, sun was shining, and uh, it was the, the beer was delivered. Yeah, I went to the car wash today, and, and you know what I mean, I you know, got some beer and got some beer delivered, and it was it's been a, it's been a good day. I feel like uh, we're 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 getting closer to some some sanity uh, outside of the house, man. I'm just you know, looking forward to it. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling that too, and that scares me. It scares me that I'm feeling that way. That yeah. I'm, that, I'm, that I'm feeling like I think we're like the sun was out. I feel like things are trending in the right direction for the first time in a long time. Mm. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm somewhat skeptical, but I'm, I'm feeling it. I'm, I'm happy. Yeah, I mean, at this point, you know, people are gonna do what they do. You know, I'm, I, I. I keep my distance and I like I, the pandemic, I guess, has really taught. I mean, I guess if there's one lesson that I've learned is how to be happy apart from humanity, mm -hmm. which is is weird. I mean, you know, as a as you know, as entertainers, as you know, producers of events and, you know, a lot of what we do is is just based in human society and needing people and whatnot. And, um, you know, I it, it's uh, it's. You know, like I said, there, there's, there was a whole lot of, at the beginning of this, like, oh, man, everybody do their job. Everybody get it done. You know, we're not going to come back until everybody does the thing. And it's like, at this point, man, you know, like, there's, there's only but so much we can do. You know, you, you really only have control over yourself. And and that's it. So, you know, I, 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 I've watched, I read enough, I, I watch enough news and, 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 and I'm, I'm up there. So I feel like I can move around society a society of people who aren't doing what the fuck they're supposed to do safely enough so that I don't become infected and the people around me are, you know, my immediate circle aren't infected. And, you know, that, that'll, you know, how, how everything shakes out the whole world or whatever, how it becomes endemic or whatever. I can't control that, but as long as I can control myself and enjoy a, a, a sunny car wash from time to time, I think I think I'll get by, man, and that's 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 where the hope is. It's it's the it's the hope that you know I can continue to find happiness apart from the fuck shit that people are doing. You know, when I drive past a uh, a parking lot packed with cars in a very tiny building, I'm like, you know what? I'm not there. So, right. you know, I mean, that's you gotta you gotta start taking the joy where you can find it, man. So right. that's where. It is. And and I know you might be taking some joy in that beer you're drinking right now. Mm. Mm -mm. So came home, and what was uh what was what was at the door was um some Cajun Fire. So Cajun Fire is a uh, brewery out in New Orleans, 
and uh, they are black owned um, and they are delicious. So they, they, they have been around for a few years. I'm going to say about four or five years now. Um, and this is their uh, P train funk IPA. Um, you know, so, you know, as, as it says on the can, it's a tribute to the historic Port Chartrain's trains part. I guess if you've been down to New Orleans, or if you're if you're if you're a resident of New Orleans, you're familiar with the area. Um, and this was, uh, you know, this was their way of incorporating the community into the beer um, and giving them something that, you know, you're, you're looking at a predominantly black area. Um, you know, they're they're probably not going to be drinking the hoppiest. You know, starting off. I mean, that's just you know, people starting off in the in craft beer. They don't. They don't want a hot bomb. You got to work your way up to that. I mean, some do. I'm a, I'm a masochist, so you give me a hot bomb. I'm like, what the fuck? And I, you know, give me more. But um, <laughs> you know, this is this is a milkshake raspberry IPA. Um, so it's 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 gonna have. So it has flaked oats in it. It gives you a little bit of that that creamy texture, that full body texture. Um, it has the raspberry and lactose in it, which can very easily go off the rails. Um, it could become too sweet if you have too many of that, you know, fake syrup in it or whatever. Mm. Um, too much lactose. Uh, it's just, you know, the body and it just, it's, it can be, it can be really weird. Um, the, the, the hops can be off. It can be so many things can go wrong with that. And it didn't. Um, and I'm, I'm very surprised because I haven't, I used to really love milkshake IPAs when they were first introduced a few years back. And, um, then they just became goofy, like most things in craft beer. You know, it starts off nice. It's a good concept. Some people are doing it really well. It becomes popular, and then everybody hops on. And then it's just like not everybody makes good beer. So then you start getting trash. And it's like, you know, I, I brew lagers, but I'm going to try this milkshake IPA. And it's like that's not, that's not what you do. So stick to what you do. So these guys do this really well. Um, and uh, like I said, I was, I was kind of a – I was, I was cautious. Whenever he had told me about it, I was like, ah, all right. You know, if you, if you say so, I mean, if you, to, to go with a milkshake IPA to like send somebody and say, you got to try this, that's bull. Um, because again, there's a lot of goofy shit out there and this is very well balanced. He, he really pulled it off. Um, this is a year round a selection that he's putting out. Uh, one of his flagships, which again is, uh, it, it's a, it's a weird flagship to have. Typically you got an IPA. You know, usually a, a hazy IPA these days or, you know, something simple like a red ale or something like that. But, um, you know, he went milkshake raspberry IPA and uh, man, it's it's good shit. So shout out to Cajun Fire. You can't get it here, but, um, you know, if you hit them up, you know, maybe you can find out some, you know, connections and whatnot. You know, the craft beer world is very uh, crafty when it comes to getting you your shit. So, you know, That's shout insane. out to them. Cajun Fire got a, got a nice website too. It looks like yeah, man. That yeah. That, that, that honey is a it's it's a lager. It's really again balanced. The Big Chief is another. It's a stout um, balance. It's they 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 do a really good job of putting in flavor and not going overboard where it just sits on your palate for an hour after you're done drinking it, um, and it just lingers in in the back. There's just so many poorly you know, crazy IPAs and, and things of that nature. So shout out to those guys gotcha. uh, doing it in New Orleans. Right. Um, the next thing, uh, so yesterday I was out, you know, a little bit more local, stopped down at 11th hour and um, got their Black is Beautiful. Okay. Um, so the Black is Beautiful, uh, I, I believe I, I, I talked about it a bit. Um, a while back when it first dropped in the summertime, um, yes. you know, there were, it's a, it's a collaboration with weathered souls. Um, and I don't know, I think the, the, it was, it was 1500 breweries, maybe 2000 breweries last I checked, um, you know, worldwide, uh, and the funds, the proceeds for each of these beers, um, go to a organization that, um, looks to, uh, work against the ills in society facing black people and, uh, you know, the police, um, you know, incarceration, um, over policing, you know, just, uh, change in the, in the justice system. Um, and, uh, you know, again, it, it was picked up by, you know, thousands of breweries, uh, worldwide. A lot of breweries are still brewing it. 
Um, and so that's and, like everybody, everybody gets that recipe and then, yeah. and then the proceeds all go to the same. Yeah, they all, coast. yeah. So they all, they all get the recipe. Um, they get a base recipe and then they do what they want with that base. Recipe. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, you know, so the base recipe is a, is a nice, um, American stout, uh, you know, it has, uh, some of those West coast, um, hops in it, usually like a, a centennial hop, um, to give it a little bit of. Uh, a little bit of, of hop character along with those roasty, chocolatey, coffee flavors with it. Um, you know, the trend in stouts over the last couple of years have been pastry, uh, lactose, big, you know, sugar and, and cakes and Oreos and cream cake, you know, all the shits. Just all, you know, and don't get me wrong, I love that shit. But again, you know, uh, not everybody should be making those motherfuckers and some people are just doing shit that they shouldn't be doing. So you got a lot of really terrible pastry uh, stouts out there. And, um, you know, this is just a, a really solid American stout um, that what they did was they, um, they barrel aged this version. So they brought out the version uh, back in the summertime, released it. Um, and then they let it sit in, in four roses barrels for six months. Oh, wow. um, so, you know, it has, you know, again, it's a, uh, it's, ah, it's just that it, it takes me back to my early days of craft beer when I first got into it and everybody was barrel aging everything. The barrel was life, you know, and all the stouts came with, you know, some Buffalo trace or, you know, some, some crazy barrel that they had just sitting around. So um, this is a, a, just a very good stout. Um, I, it, it's, it, it, there's only 20 cases of this available. So, you know, uh, if you get it, good for you. If you don't, um, they do have more sitting in barrels that they are going to release. Um, I do believe he said his, uh, the, the next batch will come out, you know, February of next year. Um, so, you know, get it now or wait until next year. And next year you'll get the year, um, the, you know, the, the year age, which will have a lot more of that barrel in it. But, um, you know, this comes in at, what, like 10%? Yeah, 10%. Uh, awesome. It's a sleeper. Um, the, the first batch was a sleeper, and that was before it was barrel aged for six months. Um, so this one is is really a one and done. Like, <laughs> it, it'll, it'll, it'll have you on the snooze. Um, and then, uh, not to be outdone, mm -hmm. um, Modern Methods uh, out in Ohio. I went out there today, uh, stopped in, in Warren. So uh, Warren, Ohio is the home of Dave Grohl, um, he's a he's a Foo Fighter uh, apparently. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure what a Foo is. Uh, I don't know if he's a Foo that fights or he fights Foos. I'm not 100 percent sure on that. It, Foo, it, Foo, it, Foo's better recognized when he comes into the room, though. Yeah, yeah, Foo's. I would imagine. I, I would. I pity the Foo that doesn't know Dave Grohl in Warren, uh, Ohio. There's a whole. So Modern Methods is in an alleyway, and in that it is a very weird place to get to. You got to like drive around the Burger King and then like make a left into an alley that you can't really park in. So then you have to go back around into a circle through the the Burger King drive through and, and apologize that you're not ordering anything because we, you know, I you got lost and then park somewhere on the street. But across from that that their their doorway is this huge alleyway with like these big drumsticks. Um, I mean, I don't know, like 30 foot drumsticks, he like cross. A, he used to be a drummer. Uh, but anyway, go on. I don't know. If, I don't, I don't know if you can used to be play an instrument unless you like, you know, you get to Alzheimer's once a, once a drummer, I think you're always a drummer unless, but you know, again, that, but he's, his first band was Nirvana and he was the yeah. drummer. And then his second yeah. band, he's the front man and plays guitar and everything else. But yes, go on. I agree with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's uh, yeah. So, so big, so big, big drumsticks, big drumsticks, and a big mural, and a bunch of you know Dave Grohl, like you know, just just. I mean, it's it's wild. I didn't I didn't know how big he was in his hometown. I didn't even know where his hometown was. Um, but, I gotta be uh, honest. I just found out tonight. Like, you, <laughs> like I'm, I'm and I, and I like and I like the Foo Fighters, and I I enjoy the Nirvana, obviously, but um. But uh, yeah, I had no clue he was from Warren, Ohio. But, but I, I I didn't either. But, uh, but do, I do, do, there. do you know what I knew before mm. I found out about Dave Grohl being from there? I mm. knew that Aaron Hart was in Cleveland today. 
So, mm. so, so, because she said that in the comments that I forgot to bring that up. But anyway, so, so I didn't so, know she was seeing you. We were probably see, on the same road at some point. That's what I'm wow. saying. Wow. All right. So, small world. So, anyway, go on now. Back to, so, back to the story. So, they, um, so I stopped in and uh, I've stopped in there in the past. Um, uh, one of their brewers, Hannah Ferguson, um, is the first uh, professional black woman to brew in Ohio. Oh. Um, so, uh, I met her a couple of years ago. Um, I actually met her at Fresh Fest um, a few years ago. She, you know, she was just super excited to be there, um, meeting so many other black brewers. Um, you know, being a black woman in, in brewing is a is a being black in brewing is, is a unicorn status. Being a woman in brewing is a unicorn status. I don't know what the word is for black woman in beer, but it's the unicorn of unicorns. Um, and uh, you know, I, I went out there to visit her, and they make really good beer. She uh, she started out making wine at first. Um, and she still is a winemaker. She actually just uh, acquired a space for her wine brand. Uh, mm. So she will be making that. She will be producing that commercially soon. Um, but uh, she uh, she went from winemaking, stopped in. at her, She uh, she was working with the 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 owner's wife who she would bring some wine. The 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 owner's wife would bring some beer. They would trade and they would talk about it and then she was like hey if you're ever interested to come down and that led to a brewing gig um which eventually led to this beer um which is the collaboration the black is beautiful um love the can design um that's on it uh see me hear me speak of me um it's uh oh, wow it, it, it's it, it's it's it, it's a message uh it, I we that. hear we we hear we hear so we hear so often like whenever we talk about beer and I tell you man you know I I, I post I'm in a lot of beer groups and I will post something like you know I, so I, I cause a lot of waves don't get me wrong I, I will say a lot of a lot of shit uh, and when I say a lot of shit things like you know Black Lives Matter you know that's enough saying something like that is um, uh, uh, controversial here in America but um, the other day you know a few days ago I just posted. Um, Beer Advocate did an article that just listed all of the black owned breweries in America, um, less than 70. Uh, most states don't have a black owned brewery. And of those uh, black of those 70, which is less than one percent, um, only about half of them have a brick and mortar. So you know, I post these this 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 article in groups and all the article is, is, hey, here's some black owned breweries that you can support. Uh, in America, and the comments are like, "Oh, I don't care what color you are. You know, you you know, if, if you make good beer, I'll drink your beer. Like, why does it gotta be about race?" Da, 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 da. And you know, and it's first and foremost, you know, something like, "Hey, support black owned breweries." Uh, why did you feel it? Why did you feel so offended or feel a need to speak up in the comment section about you know, oh, I drink good beer. And if it's you know, if if you make good beer, I drink it. It doesn't matter about your color. Like cool oh, all, all beer matters. All beer matters. You know, like okay, cool story, bro. You know what yeah. I mean, but like you know, colorblind doesn't. The colorblind is a privilege. Um, you know, uh, you can't, you can't, you can't solve the ills of the world by ignoring them. You know, you 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 know that that all you know everything matters or whatever. Like not all patients. Um, you know, while they do all matter, not all patients are in, as in severe need of help as others. You know, I mean, you walk in missing an arm, the guy with a cough is probably going to get pushed back a little bit. You see what I'm saying? And and that is that's the great thing analogy. You, that's the thing is when you're looking at this with the beer industry and whatnot, when you see the lack of diversity in the beer industry and the fact that the beer industry is plateauing. Um, you know, the styles that are, that, that are coming out, the flavors, um, the sales, the events, a lot of things around the craft beer industry are going the way that most homogeneous industries go in that they're, they're getting stale. I mean, you need to introduce new blood, new ideas, new demographics. And if you're going to do that, if you're going to ex continue to expand as an industry, you need to be thoughtful in moving forward and bringing more folks in, more more black people, more women, more people in the LGBTQ community, making them feel comfortable. And you're only going to do that by actually seeing people, hearing people, and speaking of the people that aren't there. 
Um, you know, ignoring them is not going to do anything but exacerbate the situation. So um, love the love the, the can art on uh, on this. Uh, love Hannah's story. Um, love modern methods um, for you know constantly having this conversation um, present in their brewery and a lot of what they do around the community. Um, and I just, you know, I, I love this collaboration. Um, I, I don't see it going anywhere. And uh, shout out to Weathered Souls. I know that they just got a um, uh, a contract with Walmart. So, um, you know, it's uh, it's one of the few black owned breweries that in America that you will be able to get outside of the uh, the the five mile radius um, that brewery exists in. So um, shout out to that. And if you happen to be in Walmart and you catch uh you know, black is beautiful on the shelves. By all means, grab it up. Fantastic, man. Yeah, that's amazing, man. Uh, yeah, gonna have you on the show every night. <laughs> I don't know if my liver. I don't know if my liver could take it, but I do. Um, I do appreciate y'all giving me space to uh, feel a little, feel a little normal, um, and, and talk to somebody that isn't the wall. Well, um, hey, well, I'm happy. I'm happy that I'm a step up from the wall, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but uh but 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 that's great man um so before we uh before we start to think about wrapping things up here um you got anything else to talk about because we still have um all the guests from the show i think are still in the system i want to pop in and say hello oh Can't yeah no i mean I, I ain't got i ain't got anything else brewing over here and yeah, i'm right. just finishing this out but yeah so let's hang for a minute we got bunny lebowski we got dan it did, did kate take off pete Oh my God! We got there everybody. We got Kate, oh, wow. Dan. We got Jess here. Dan and Jess <laughs> were doing the the fish fry conversation earlier tonight. So if you got a, anything to add about fish fries day, uh, the Lenten fish fries, but but man, you, you gotta you gotta you gotta find like there's a lot. Of, listen, man, there's a lot of there's a lot of fish fries out there. Mm. I'm, I'm a big fan of the I'm big, a big fan of the catfish. You know what I mean, like catfish. I think I think it's a I think it's an under I think it's an underappreciated uh, fish here in this region. A lot of cod going on. A lot of cod. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a catfish guy. Catfish <laughs> is not a curse. thing in southwestern PA at the fish fries, <laughs> but I do love a catfish situation. So I think it's because uh, like, cod rhymes with God. I think, and that makes it very uh, easy for the churchgoers to uh, glom onto. And that's that's carp that's at Pomatuming, right? That horrible, horrible. Have you ever been to Pomatuming, guys? Yeah. <laughs> have you seen where they where the duck where the duck walk on the fish? Have you seen that? <laughs> what? Have you, have, well, you guys don't know about this. This is Pomatuming, right? The the causeway. You guys have never been there or heard about this? Yeah. It's the most terrible. It's the most terrifying thing. Probably one of the most terrifying places you'll be. There are literally hundreds of thousands of these cod that they get fed bread i think they're right? carp aren't they carp carp, carp not carp oh. I, it's carp i meant carp <laughs> yeah I, I i said i started with carp and then i switched into cod because well that's what's that's what the topic of the day is all right if you've been to this place i, I might have talked about this on one other one of the other 152 shows but <laughs> literally you you pull up and you see people like looking over the spillway and you don't understand what the, the water looks weird right but it's literally fish yeah. gasping for air oh, coming up there look this is what it looks like oh my oh, god I hate that. okay oh, and, I hate that. and those fish are oh, huge right and their mouths are, because people feed them bread constantly they loaded this lake this like man-made lake or whatever no. with these yeah. fish for people to fish but people no. started doing it you can see fish no. dying they get get oh. worked out of the water and oh. can't get back in because there's so many people there and and there's a place across the street that literally sells old bread i hate it i hate it i also hate it why are people just like coming through it looks like some kind of environmental disaster yeah yeah i'm not interested hold on day i think day's talking we're having a hard time hearing what'd you say day no, I just I don't understand why people are. I mean, that seems like a I, I, like I don't, are there not hungry people there that want fish? That sounds that looks like an easy catch. You like, do why not. Are there people just... <laughs> I, I think there's a phrase for that. I, I, I don't think you can <laughs> fish in the spillway. Is that how? It... Yeah, I, I don't think you're supposed to eat this fish. 
Uh, There's a lot of carbs in that fish. There's a lot of carbs in that fish. <laughs> Don't knock it till you tried it. But but you see how that's all those fish are there. And it's all over the place, right? And the duck literally walk on the fish heads no, and I, snag up no, the bread no. before the people are throwing it. And it's just 24 set. People are just coming by throwing bread constantly. And these are Ready? giant, fat, crazy fish. I know this is off topic. I don't know how I got onto this, but I think Where it's Patrick, it's I hate it. <laughs> What's that? It's where are the predators? Like throw some, like throw a shark in that motherfucker. So like, where are the few things that like you know I mean? You gotta balance that shit out. Where are the predators at? Like throw an eel those alligators that gets loose in the city every once in a while. Put one of them up there. <laughs> it, it, it scarred me. One of those beach view alligators. It literally scarred me when I went there. A, a, a friend was working at a nature reserve not far from there. And we're like, oh, you want to go to the spillway? And I'm like, oh, yeah, sure. Let's go to the spillway. Oh, my God. It was it was terrifying. And it was like, these weren't healthy looking fish. No. They're begging for something. And, and <laughs> half of them can't even get out of there. I mean, they're just stuck. They can't. No. Where, where are they going to go? They're going to go upstream. There's a big lake. And there's like, the, every, oh, it's just. It's just That's fish, terrible. just just carcasses. So, go have a fish fry, everybody. So, no, so anyway, anyway, look, this is a different kind of fish. I don't know why. I just brought that up because I wanted to share. I didn't mean to scare you guys, but I wanted somebody to have been there. <laughs> that was a horrible way to end this whole thing. Back it's not over. It's not this over, Jess. It's, it's not, not over, over. Oh, Jess. It's, it's I not can't, over, I can't Jess. Deal with this anymore. So so anyway, back to the fish. Back to these There's fantastic. Some in there. So forget about yeah. forget about carp. Okay, so if you were gonna if you were gonna eat carp, would you use ketchup or or purell? Ketchup or purell. Which would you which would you would you dip it or would you put the purell in every bite like a little glob or would you spread the purell across just I mean, to just to disinfect that that now that you've, yeah Go now ahead. that you've shown that video, I'm on the purell side of things, whereas before. You know, I am very into ketchup, so <laughs> but the Purell I think sounds pretty good at this point. It, after, so. after after looking at that, well, well yeah, thank you, that's Jess. Fun. That's there's there's the ketchup with bunny. Bunny, bunny gonna, gets it. Ketchup is even good as a pillow. <laughs> oh, I love uh, bunny. From Bunny Lebowski, the pup with a hand there. There's a hand. I think it's Bunny growing a hand, or is, is it somebody else's hand? Sleeping on the ketchup. I think she's <laughs> sleeping on the ketchup. That's what's up. So anyway, as far as fish fries go. Fried fish, throw throw out throw throw out a shot. Are we got we got the? Do we, is there anything we left out on fried fish? Where you get your fried fish? Could be catfish, could be the could be the the cod. Someone I saw no. so. Oh, Jackie Page. Catfish is available at Black Fish Fries. Jackie. Black Fish Fries. Yeah, yeah that's yo, Like there are there are yo there are there are black people in the city, which is kind of crazy. <laughs> I know. And Absolutely. We, uh, <laughs> We, uh, you know, cod is uh, foreign to us. Like cod is like what you eat when, you know, you when you're you when you're smiling politely, you know, at a white friend's house. So, uh, <laughs> you, know, it's, uh, you know, like Fat Franks be making some uh, catfish down there. Um, I do believe um, where I go to, I go to, I go to uh, Annie Lee's out of Cambridge. Um, I've been Annie Lee's. Annie Lee's is down in South Side. Um, Annie Lee's is amazing. Annie Lee's is, is phenomenal. They they hey, make really. Hey, where where'd you stay in the South Side? Uh, Turmine. Turmine. Oh, Turmine. I was gonna shout them out earlier. Best. Yes. Oh, so fucking good. And also, best mac and cheese in Pittsburgh. I have to say. Damn. Damn. They, that, that, best mac and cheese in Pittsburgh, hands down. They, like they, yeah. yeah, it's pretty good. They have a it's great. So night. good. That place looks great. I see so, a lot of heads nodding up and down. Yeah. I thought that somebody saying the best Mac in anything was going to be like, like uh, I thought like bombs were going to get thrown. No, I'm sorry. It, I, there, there's, like a, there's like a unified like, so you know what? Yeah, that is a pretty good Mac and cheese. Just, That's my favorite just, thing there. Like we've gotten it for, we get like the big um, catering dishes for a couple, for parties we've had and stuff like that. Um, there, that is probably, yes. <laughs> yeah. Their mac and cheese is the, my favorite thing there, without a doubt. Yeah, so good. Okay. Without a doubt. Okay. Mm-hmm. Good stuff. And Kate, I think it's Lent friendly. And Lent friendly, yes. Oh, yeah. Uh, Kate, and uh, what was the beer you got from East End on that pizza and pretzel and pickle amazing package? It's this um, 
It's part of their neighborhood series. It's the East Carnegie. It is a day. Don't make fun of me. I'm like not a, a super beer person. It's a hot, hazy IPA with cryo hops. Oh, that's that new thing. Yeah. Is it? I, it's delicious. Yeah. It's going they, down they, well. They, they, uh, they're like freeze. They freeze them or something. I just heard about this for the first time recently. Cryo hops, like yeah, like, like, like Demolition yeah. Man with Wesley yes. Snipes, like, like yeah. Ted Williams is frozen and cryogenics like, hey, or whatever, okay. like the same shit. Yeah. Oh wow! I just so, heard about. I, somebody else was using them recently. Uh, I forget who, but I, I, maybe at Helltown or um, Hitchhiker or one of them. I forget who, but I I, I had it. Re- I mean, I I couldn't tell the difference. But. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a thing now. It's a thing. That's and what was what was the other what was the other four pack, Kate? Loophole. Loophole. It's called loophole. Ooh, yeah, that's the uh, the statewide collaboration. Um, they found a loophole in the laws that allowed them to uh, sell beer that was not brewed. Like it was some some weird law that like. They couldn't, it couldn't be a, a, the whole collab. Uh, it, it, I don't know. Beer laws are weird, but they brought the loophole that allowed a bunch of breweries statewide to brew the same beer and then uh, donate the proceeds um, elsewhere. Is, is that is that going to the workers, um, to the um, the folks that are out of work now uh, in, the, no. in the industry? No. The, the, the beer is not. That I'm aware of. Um, I'm not sure who is it's being donated back to, but um, I haven't tried that one yet, so we'll see. Mm. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's it, it's good. Um, it's a, East End makes really good beer. Uh, shout out to Scott and um, yeah, shout out to, to the to the, to the folks trying, you know, helping out the uh, service industry in this in this difficult time, man. Like I, it's it's wild. I don't. I mean, folks could barely pay, pay their bills when shit was in, so. Um, and, and uh, fuck Biden. I mean, he owed me money. So, you know, shout out to shout out to East End for doing the uh, government's job out here. Yeah, yeah. But um, go ahead. Sorry, somebody was going to say something. I talked over them. Uh, fuck Donald Trump. Uh, oh. that's, uh, I, mean, <laughs> I was wondering if you were going. I was. Well, I was. I was just wondering if that was that, that was that was, good, that was gonna make that was gonna make the uh, the, the comeback here. <laughs> I got I got sidetracked here. Um, what were we talking about? The um, uh, what was talking about the the East End? Uh, it was something about I the forgot. Loophole what it was. Beer. I oh, the loophole beer. Oh, the loophole beer. That's what it was. Oh, the so loophole beer. So you can't sell. I guess you can't sell beer from other breweries uh, mm. out th- to go if you like. So they can't sell like a different brewery's beer to go unless it's a collaboration. So the loophole is a collaboration with different breweries, so they could each sell that beer. I guess. So I was going to say that they be, they're kind of flaunting it in your face if you find a loophole. I mean, it's a great name for the beer that they found a loophole, but isn't that kind of like, hey, we got you, motherfuckers. And then somebody could be like, oh, that, we're just going to close that loophole. Like, well, oh, that, I mean, that... you, well, yeah. you, you figure PA, PA Libations, um, you know, shout out to Christian down there, but PA Libations is built on loopholes. Like that whole, like, it's the yeah. only privately owned liquor store in PA, and he did it through tying a bunch of loopholes. Like, I mean, like, he's been so. Yeah, I mean, it's it literally is like it, it, you. It, the thing about loopholes is, is that they're usually put in there, uh, you know, like and, and they're there for the the wily and usually the rich. So you know, like it takes a it, it takes a lot to, to close that shit up because there's somebody with money, some old rich guy that's like, ah, I like it that way, and I won't fund your campaign. So you know. It's, uh, <laughs> Yeah, and these are old white guys brewing it. So I mean, who who better to flaunt the law than they? So, <laughs> Jess, you're getting a shout out. Sarah is a big fan of yours. Oh wow! Okay, Asians supporting Asians. You know, this is what this is. This, that's all it takes. All right. Well, I mean, this show this this show. I mean, I know we're in uh, week fifty here, but this this show feels like week two in that we went long. Uh, we were having fun here with everybody. I want to thank everybody, uh, Dan, Jess, uh, Day, Kate, everybody for being on the show tonight. Uh, tomorrow night, we've got Helper High Water. It's a virtual volunteer and variety fest. It's almost going to be like some speed dating type stuff. 
for uh, to, to find out what all these organizations do and how to get involved. Uh, they would have thrown a big, crazy party had it not been for the pandemic. But uh, instead of the party, they are going to be here uh, with us sharing our platform. So be sure to tune in tomorrow at 8 o'clock from that. That's basically it. That's me riding shotgun. Uh, Toonses. Toonses, the That's cat great. who could drive a car. But anyway, uh, uh, thanks. Props to everybody. Thank you all for being here. Um, see everybody soon. If you guys want to add anything to that, I've wrapped. Good job. Th thank, thank, you, th thank you, everybody. Fried fish uh, forever. Thank you. Fr fried, fried fish forever. <laughs> Doesn't matter the kind. Stay away from the carp. Oh. I'll, 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 all right. Thank you, everybody. Catch up. Catch up. Uh, Keep, keep, catch keep, up, catch ke up, catch up. All right, all right. We can have catch up for everybody, but um, just keep on wearing your masks, everybody at home. Keep wearing your masks. Keep the social distancing, uh, and keep sane. Uh, try to take care of each other. Reach out to somebody, a friend that you haven't talked to in a while that you think might be going through it right now. I know everybody is, but you never know who you could help. So, um, props. Uh, thank you all very much, and we'll be back tomorrow at eight o'clock. Help her high water. Um, and. Uh, you know, might as well just throw it to Sally Wigan for the hell of it. Keep on scratching. <laughs> when I walk out and there's someone without a mask and they come too close to me, I, I, I'm just racked with fear and then I want to punch them in the face. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Listen, listen to Sally and uh, Pete's going to send us off. I want to thank everybody for sticking around and uh, don't forget. Take care, everybody. Look at everybody's websites. Look at all the comments. There's so many. There's so many links. So many things to support. Bye, everybody. Bye, everyone. That sounds hey. killing me. <laughs>